Welcome back to the Launchpad. Zach here with an update about NASA's Artemis timeline and the development of NASA's next generation spacesuits. A few months ago, I broke the story that NASA was looking at opening a commercial contract for the next generation spacesuits less than a year after they unveiled what they said was going to be the new suit. A couple weeks ago, I broke down a draft version of that contract, and now we finally know why NASA has chosen to proceed with a commercial contract rather than their own suit. The NASA Inspector General completed an audit of the Next Generation suits and has released a full report of the audit. So let's launch right into it, but before we do, make sure to engage that like and subscribe button. It's free and it really helps us out. First, let's take a look at how long NASA has been working on these new suits and why the audit was performed. The development of the new spacesuit is a critical component of NASA's goal of returning humans to the moon, continuing safe operations on the ISS, and exploring Mars and other deep space locations. For extravehicular activities such as spacewalks or exploring the lunar surface, astronauts require these mobility units, or EMUs, which includes the spacesuits themselves, but also all the equipment and hardware to connect those devices to the ISS or other space systems. Currently, astronauts use EMUs designed 45 years ago for the Space Shuttle program and rely on refurbished or partially redesigned spacesuits for their activities on the ISS. For the past 14 years, NASA has been working on developing the next generation of spacesuit technology, which five years ago led to the creation of a project known as the Exploration Extravehicular Mobility Unit, or the XEMU, which will be used to support astronaut involvement in a couple of programs. From 2008 to 2017, NASA spent $200 million on the XEMU development, and from 2018 to 2021, NASA spent an additional $220 million on further development. The audit was completed to examine to what extent NASA is addressing challenges related to cost, schedule, and performance of the next generation system. The audit gives us a great look at the progress made, but what is still need to be completed, and if it can be done so on budget, but most importantly, on time. Did you know prior to 2019, NASA was planning to have the first flight-ready suits for the ISS by 2023, and that Artemis 3 wasn't scheduled actually to take place until 2028, but in 2019, they fast-tracked the Artemis timeline, so the lunar landing would be in 2024. NASA's current plan is to produce the first two flight-ready XEMUs by November 2024, but NASA has faced some significant challenges in meeting that goal, and we're going to get into that. This current plan includes an approximately 20-month delay in delivery for the planned design, verification, and suit testing, including two qualification suits, an ISS demo suit, and two lunar flight suits. These delays are for a variety of reasons, including funding shortfalls, COVID-19 impacts, and technical challenges. Unfortunately, this has left NASA with no possible way to meet their delivery target of the first two flight-ready XEMUs by November 2024. Given the current integration requirements, the first suits would not be ready for flight until April 2025 at the absolute earliest. Also, by the time the first two suits are available, NASA will have spent over a billion dollars on research and development and assembly, which lets us know there's over $625 million still needing to be required to finish. Since 2008, NASA has gone through three different suit ideas, and now they're considering a fourth, but with commercial partners. These delays in spacesuit development make NASA's planned lunar landing in late 2024 not feasible. That said, NASA's inability to complete development of the XEMUs for a 2024 moon landing is not the only factor risking the current timeline for the return to the moon. A previous audit identified significant delays in other major program essentials to return to the moon in 2024, including the SLS rocket, the Orion capsule, and more. Delays related to the lunar lander development and the recently decided lander contract award bid protest are also putting the 2024 mission at risk. We finally know that SpaceX will be able to resume their work on their HLS lander as they received the first $300 million check from NASA. Another risk that has been identified for the current new spacesuit plan is how many different contractors and vendors are working on components for the suit. If just one has a delay, NASA would have to wait. Spacesuit development continues, but because of delays and suit requirements from key programs for such as HLS, ISS, and the Gateway Station, these delays lead to an increased risk of future costs, schedule, performance issues, and more. Additionally, prior to their use on the ISS and Artemis missions, astronauts will be required to have a lot of suit training. The EVA office is concerned there would not be significant quantities of the training hardware available for early training events to support the current 2024 Artemis 3 mission timeline. 
As NASA continues to develop and mature the next generation spacesuit's capabilities, the agency will be required to decide on its approach for procuring additional suits, both for the ISS and for Artemis missions. In October 2019, NASA issued a request for information to determine industry capabilities to fulfill future spacesuit needs. At that time, NASA intended to initiate a hybrid contract consisting of a single prime contractor for integration and multiple awards for development and sustainment. However, after 18 months, NASA canceled the ex-EVAPS contract and issued a new request for information in April 2021 for the Exploration e Extravehicular Activity Services, the ex-EVAS, significantly altering the approach for the future spacesuit acquisition by purchasing services instead of equipment. If you want to learn more about that, go a little bit further back on the channel. We break all of that down when we first heard about it. As previously mentioned, NASA has spent more than $420 million on spacesuit design and development, but the new XEVA's contract give the industry the choice to either leverage NASA's designs or propose their own. Therefore, the extent to which NASA's investments will be utilized is unclear. Additionally, the XEVA's contract does not stipulate that the suit be compatible with both the ISS and Artemis programs, a distinction that could result in the industry developing and NASA purchasing two different spacesuits, one for low Earth orbit on the ISS and another for use on the lunar surface during the Artemis missions and maybe Mars. Given the station's limited expected lifespan, developing a suit solely for the ISS may not prove cost-effective, but we'll just have to wait to see what happens. The Inspector General presented NASA with four recommendations following his audit. One, adjust the schedule as appropriate to reduce development risks. Two, develop an integrated master schedule to incorporate and align hardware deliveries and training needs of the dependent programs such as Gateway, ISS, and HLS. Three, ensure technical requirements for the next generation suits are solidified before selecting the acquisition strategy to procure the suits for the ISS and Artemis program. And fourth, develop an acquisition strategy for the next generation suits that meets the needs of both the ISS and the Artemis program. We're going to be keeping a close eye on how NASA progresses with their current XEMU development and the new XEVA's commercial contract, as these are a critical part of future space exploration. Make sure to never miss another space news update by engaging that subscribe button, and we will see you right back here on the Launchpad next time. This is Zach, signing off. Oh, you thought we were done. Not yet. I need one more thing from you guys. We are heading to NASA Kennedy Space Center for Inspiration4 and to Starbase to cover the first ever orbital flight test of Starship. And we want to bring you with us and be able to give you the best possible content we can. So if you can take just a couple minutes, check out the video that I've got pinned right here. It tells a little bit more about what we're doing and a little bit about our GoFundMe. The trip's already covered, but we need your help upgrading some of our equipment. I know times are tough, so even 5 or $10 is a huge help. Or even just sharing the link with your friends and family. Thanks, guys. But for now, this is Zach signing off.